Everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Logic Live. This is episode 25. We're almost six months into this, everybody, this little experiment. Episode 25, uh, Machine Learning with Andy and the new forum with Randy. Uh, so thank you, everybody. And uh, again, in case anyone didn't see, hey, Minosh, um, we have uh, uh, our friends over at Boris. We're going to do a, a, a Mocha Pro deep dive today, but they uh, need a bit more time to, to finish uh, perfecting a couple of new features. So they've rescheduled for, um, for later in October. And I want to thank my good friend, Randy McEntee, for filling in. Uh, fun fact, the, uh, the puppet behind me uh, is named Randy. And so when I told my, it's Randy Milkis, of course. And when I told my wife that uh, she asked who's your guest going to be on the show this week, I was like, oh, it's going to be me and Randy. She was like, well, it's, it's really, we've gotten to ventriloquism at this point. It's been one hell of a lockdown. Um, so welcome everybody. And let's get underway. This episode of Logic Live is brought to you as always by our friends at Cinesis.io, solutions, development, integration, and support. Uh, please, uh, if you have any, if you want to know more about their, their remote workflow solutions, definitely check them out at Cinesis.io. Supporting flame artists since 1997. It has been a hell of a couple of weeks here. We launched two weeks ago the forum, the new forum. Randy's going to talk about that at forum.logic.tv. It's going to take you on a guided tour of, uh, of all of its features and how to set it up. Um, oh, thank you, Jeff. I... <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, man. You'll see what happens the next time I have somebody need to postpone. Um, Randy's going to take us through the new forum uh, and all of its features and how to set it up, uh, especially on mobile. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's been uh, really well received. I want to thank everybody for all the feedback and all the participation. We're really excited about this new little endeavor and taking logic to the next level. So thanks, everybody. We also launched One Frame of White 2020. Uh, there are now 30 people signed up for One Frame of White, and I'm super excited about that. There's still plenty of time. Uh, to participate. So if you would like to um, get involved in One Frame of White this year, please do. Of course, One Frame of White, for those of you who don't know, is the most amazing thing. Uh, you make the most amazing thing you can think of using only the tools in Flame. So no outside footage or, or outside uh, uh, models or anything, just the stuff that comes with Flame. And uh, every year there's a theme. This theme, uh, theme for this year is joy because, you know, if we ever needed uh, something to smile about, uh, this would be the time for that. And uh, the maximum length for your entry is 30 seconds. The contest is running now. Entries are due on September 30th. Again, that's plenty of time at 11.59, 59 p.m. my time. And uh, everybody who enters gets a 30-day license of Sapphire on OFX. You can use uh, Sapphire plugins. You can use any of the uh, Logic Matchbox plugins. Um, for, as part of your entry. And uh, you can download a 30-day uh, trial of Flame, fully functional, um, to use for your entry as well. Details on everything, the rules, uh, are all available at oneframeofwhite.com. We have an amazing lineup of prizes this year, okay? Uh, beginning with, I'm going to go back, goddammit, because I was so excited about this prize that I pushed the forward button. Uh, first place is a Dell Precision 7750 mobile workstation. This is a kick-ass machine, all right? It's, uh, you can run Flame on it. In fact, I don't know if anybody caught uh, the um, Autodesk Vision series last week, but they were, they were certainly showing it off. Uh, I think it was Mark Renton was, uh, was, was uh, talking about his experience with the machine, but a 17-inch machine with an NVIDIA Quadro, uh, NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000 and plenty of RAM and not just one but two SSDs. Uh, a great machine, and uh, this comes to us courtesy of Dell, Intel, and Quadro, and our friends at Autodesk. So that's first place, but that's not all. Second place is a 12-month license of Flame. Third place, a 12-month license of Flare. Fourth place, an IO 4K box from our friends at AJA. Fifth place is a 12-month license of the Boris, Boris FX Suite. That's everything that they make. Sixth place, a $500 store credit to the best stock footage on the internet, actionvfx.com. Seventh place is a set of AirPods Pro from our friends at Cinesis. And rounding out uh, at eighth place, a $99 gift certificate from FXPHD. So don't wait or wait till the end of the show, but don't wait. Go to oneframeofwhite.com now and sign up and become part of Flame History. Look at that. See, the music fades out now, too. I got to thank Randy for showing me that little trick there. All right, everybody. So again, welcome to Logic Live today. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, this is going to be a two-part show. The first thing I want to do is show off a couple of the uh, ML or the machine learning tools uh, that I've been taking advantage of in, in doing the beauty work and retouching work um, that I do. So uh, I would say show of hands, has anybody tried these tools, the, the machine learning tools? 
feel free to, let's see. You know, there's a, re I believe there's a reactions button. No, right. Yes. Okay. So Quinn has said, yep. I've definitely seen some, uh, some, uh, some comments on logic and on the new forum about this and, uh, people had questions and, uh, I just wanted to show off how I've been using, uh, the new face extraction tool. So somewhere on this machine, somewhere, I have flame running, allegedly. Hold on. Da, 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 da. There we go. Okay, let's share this and get underway. <laughs> there you go. Boom. All right. So uh, I have here in flame a, a couple of, uh, of beauty shots from a spot I worked on in the last year or so. And uh, let me go ahead and make a new, a new batch. All right. A uh, little Python plug here. I have a, a, a Python script that I wrote that uh, I've made available uh, to, to everybody that you can use to customize your own batch group if you like your batches in a certain way with a certain name, just the touch of a button or a keyboard shortcut, and boom, you got what you need. Let me take these four clips here and I'm just gonna drag them into batch and we'll dive into batch and see what we got. Okay. So let's start with this first clip here, all right? Um, as far as the machine learning tools, you know, these things are uh, matchboxes. So if you go to the, uh, your, uh, your node bins and go to matchbox and just press M on the keyboard, you'll see them all. And there are a bunch of them now, you know, one's, one will create a depth map, another's good for sky extraction. There are ones that'll give you a, a mat for the whole human body, but we're gonna work on the human face extraction one, which has become my new favorite thing because we do a lot of beauty work uh, at Lively. Um, so you go and connect this thing, go ahead and press F4. And the very first time you do uh, connect your node uh, to a clip and press F4, it's going to do an analysis, right? It's gonna compare this footage to all the training that, uh, that uh, the neural net was configured with to try to identify the different features of the face. Um, maybe I should play some vamping music here, right? I'll keep everybody inspired. <laughs> Now, um, there are a bunch of different tools. Uh, oh, hey, we can stop. Thank you, music. Thank you, fade out button. All right, and so by default, what you get is this, right? I'm going to take advantage of the ultra wide screen here, and I'm just going to split this into three, okay? Um, and I'll put the uh, source clip here at context one. Move this a little bit, yeah, right? I'll have the output of the uh, matchbox node as context two, and then let me make a result here, um, a render, and we'll make that context three. Okay, right. So you can see here, right, I have, uh, by default, you get um, the skin preset. And these are all the different presets for the different regions of the face that the plugin or that the uh, ML code knows to, to find, right? So if you're looking for um, just the skin on the left side of the face, you can pick that. If you just want the eyebrows, you can pick this, right? And uh, it's pretty remarkable what it can find. In fact, you know what would be really helpful? Let me just go ahead and add um, another couple of nodes to make this more visible. I'll add a color corrector that gets fed by uh, the matchbox node, and we'll plug that into the render to create a three. So we'll just go ahead and do what we do in every demo, which is provide a little bit of color. And this is three here, and this is one. So you can see here's the original, here's the mat that the ML tool is creating, and then here's the result, right? And so if I were to switch to uh, a different region of the face, you get a mat for a different region of the face. Now, these are all great, right? But they're generic, meaning they don't really match up perfectly to every single face that you're using. Um, and, and that's just because, you know, the data or the, the uh, uh, machine learning algorithm is only as good as the data that it was trained on. Um, this is really, really good, but it, you know, it's only so good. Um, and also you can uh, combine some of these. So let me, let me show you a technique that I use. And uh, this is especially good since Evar is here, but um, you know, by default, when you pick skin, you get a mask for the skin, but it, it, it doesn't protect the nose from any of like the, the retouching that you want to do or any of the, uh, the skin work that you want to do. So um, somebody, that would be me, uh, made a suggestion for an area called a shine zone. 
when they were um, when this was in beta and uh and uh the guys at autodesk at the dev team were nice enough to add a couple of these i think t-zone was another one i suggested um based on uh on my feedback but what i normally do is i'll take if i'm going to do like overall skin cleanup i'll take this um output here the one for the t-zone just make a duplication of or duplicate the node well i guess i could have used control shift d which will duplicate with connections the day i learned that changed my life and um set this to nose so now i have a map for the nose and uh, it, it, you know the flame remembers that analysis so it doesn't have to analyze the clip again um i'll add these two mats together right and you get a good mat for the basically for the the skin or for the areas of the skin that you might want to clean up and you can add as many of these as you want and then normally what i'll do is go ahead and um, grab evar's brilliant croc beauty matchbox let's i'll do this lose this okay. and feed the uh, matchbox with this inputted mat so if i do, do ex enable external mat then what you can see here is I'm getting uh, Croc Beauty applied just to, well, basically to all the areas of the skin there that I want, right? Which is wonderful. Uh, and then the real magic of this, though, is, you know, once this has been analyzed uh, for the skin there, uh, for this particular uh, individual, then it's kind of set and good to go. So you can go ahead and kind of and build a rig. You could build like a group that has... Uh, all the nodes you need in there. And then once you pipe in something new, right, you get the same output. In fact, you know, it might be easier if I, uh, to see this, if I reconnect the uh, color correct. Well, Andy's bombing out here. Here we go. It's a live show. There we go. So if you switch the clip, you're going to get the same areas because what the ML tool, uh, is doing is, is identifying those areas on her face. So it's not like tracking or anything. And it does a, a reasonably good job at, uh, you know, anything that's occluding, like the fingers that are coming in, um, or even if we go back to the first clip, her hairline, it's really impressive. But um, like I said at the beginning, uh, sometimes you might want an area that uh, either the tool wasn't trained on, right? Or uh, something more specific. So, um, let me show you this. Like uh, uh, Jeff's here. Jeff Kyle is uh, is is here in the audience, and uh, we worked together at Lively, and we had uh, a job we worked on a couple months ago uh, where we had a hundred and like twenty shots or so, one hundred and sixty shots um, across four like two minute videos that all needed basic cleanup like this, and so we built a rig for each of the uh, four talent, and we were able to just like. Uh, factory line, just bang these through. But um, one of the things that we needed to do was um, change the color of her eyelids. All right. And this has happened. Uh, I, I get this request a lot with a lot of my beauty clients where like, you know, either the look of the makeup will change, things like that. Um, but like eyelids isn't something that's an option here uh, that in the, in the, uh, the ML tool right out of the box. However, there is an option called input mat. Okay. So you could do something like so, right? One of the other ML options is ML human face templates, all right? And if we look at this, we get um, something that to the untrained eye looks absolutely bizarre, but to the trained eye is clearly like an unfolded UV map, okay? So like this is a template showing you like where on the face each feature uh, is, is kind of projected for um, the ML tool. And so if I were to take this, and feed it into, um, you know, I'll just make a copy of one of these. So this is going to get crazy. And, and please don't judge me on my, if Andy Davis were here, he'd be very, very mad at me right now. Um, right. If I were to change this and we'll just can to input mat, right. Then you can see it's mapping uh, all the stuff from that uh, input mat or from that, the, the uh, template file. Like you can see where the UV stuff gets, gets applied, right. So let's say you wanted a mat for her eyebrows, okay? Simple enough. Um, you just need to build like a little, a little, or eyebrows, sorry, her eyelids. You just need to build like a little, a little, uh, a little cheat sheet rig to kind of show you 
where you're painting or where you're drawing. So I'm gonna take a G mask and I'm gonna apply it to the template file here, right? And then let me go ahead and comp. Sorry, that's gonna plug into a human face extract set to input mat, right? And then um, the output of this, I'm just gonna comp over top of uh, the original footage. And we'll send that over here to the side. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a G mask approximately where her, eye, uh, her eyelids are. Okay. Oop, forgot to set this to uh, screen. Okay, and now I can go back over here and I can adjust the shape of this G mask to approximate or to cover uh, the area where her eyelids are, right? And let me just do another one on the other side. Okay, and so now that I have that, right? Whoops, 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 whoops. So this G mask mat here is feeding into human face extraction. And because I drew those masks where they needed to go on the template, um, then what I'm gonna get are mats for her eyebrows, okay? So I can take those and blur that and blur that, I said, there we go. And we'll just lose this for a second. Let me grab a new color correct. I'm just, let me delete all this other stuff, clean this up a little. Grab a new color corrector. And that's some crazy eyebrows right there. But seriously, if I wanted to do something a little more refined, um, okay, so there's new eyebrow, a new eyebrow look eyebrow, I keep saying eyebrow, oh, a new eyelid, sorry, look for her, okay, that matches her eyes. And now that that's done, I can go ahead and pipe any clip in there of her. And you get instant results, right? And I'm sure you saw, it doesn't matter if she's blinking, it doesn't matter any of that. Um, so boom, with like what, two minutes worth of work? I now have four shots where the eyebrow look or the eyelid, whew, the eyelid look is ready to go. Uh, this is one of my absolute favorite beauty features now. I use it for everything. Um, and a huge thanks to the, uh, the dev team over at Autodesk for giving us a feature like this. So um, does anybody have any questions? All right, well, that my little show and tell with ML uh, human face templates and ML human, human face uh, extraction. If anybody does have any questions or anything like that, feel free to drop them on the forum uh, or on Logic and we will continue the conversation. All right, where's Randy at? Thank you, Keith. Are you there? Randy, Quinn, that is always a problem. <laughs> there we go. Hey, oh, hold on. We've got uh, we've got that uh, 2020 problem here. Wait, did you just lose power in your house? You you muted, my friend. Uh, maybe I should play a sound effect at this point. Hey, Randy, you're muted. There we go. Well, you're no longer muted, but I can't hear you. Uh, thank you. Quinn's pointing out that maybe I should grab the puppet. <laughs> uh, you can hear Randy. You can hear Randy. Why can't I hear Randy? Oh. Shit, it was me. <laughs> All right, Randy, come on back. I think we're ready. I think that was me.
Hey. There you are. Hey, now I hear you. That was me. That was me in my yeah, settings. Yeah, you got to let me in on my – I've got two users because you put me in the waiting room for the other one, and I was uh, – Oh, that's right. That's right. So, okay, And then I was, I was missing the demo, and I, I haven't seen the beauty. So I was like, oh, i got to dial in oh, my no. phone so I can see the demo. Oh, shit. Well, there you go. <laughs> one of these days. Maybe episode 26 will get it right. There you are. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, my God. You guys wouldn't you, you, you wouldn't believe if I told you that we um, – we went ahead, Randy and I got together an hour before showtime to kind of make sure that everything was working. Oh my God. All right. Awesome. So now, now that, now that uh, I've worked out my uh, technical issues, um, Randy is going to take us to, through the new forum, forum.logic.tv. Yeah. I so I, over to you, Randy. Oh, fabulous. Um, too bad I'm not a puppet with, <laughs> sorry. There's two jokes I was working up and before this technical thing when one was the puppet and one was uh, something about my eyebrows. Um, <laughs> I mean, eyelids. Um, so I wanted to <laughs> see what I did there. Oh, so the, exactly. <laughs> this is just too easy now that we're, we're in this casual uh, saving Boris. Um, so I wanted to talk about the website. There's, first off, there's been amazing traction. We've got uh, almost 400 users. Uh, last 30 days, we've got about uh, 30,000 page views. Um, so much positive stuff uh, going on. It's really exciting. Um, and I just thought we'd take this time to talk about some of, well, first, maybe even kind of why we're doing this in the first place, because there's there have been a lot of questions over, you know, hey, what's wrong with logic on Facebook? Um, and um, and there's and there's also a bunch of features that I think, you know, because it's such a, a unique forum, uh, a unique platform for the forum, um, there's just so much to talk about and so much to look. And I think that's easy to miss some of the core features and kind of why we identified this particular platform as a, a possible home for logic. Um, does that make sense? Oh, completely. So a couple of first questions. Thank you, Quinn. I can always count on you to say what everyone needs to say. Um, <laughs> so a lot of people have asked, you know, why are we, why are we doing this? And, and just to kind of share my kind of American centric view on Facebook, um, politics aside, the platform itself, Andy and, and everyone else at home, it's, it's not designed for permanence. It's not designed for long-term intimate um, sharing of knowledge. It is at its core, a disposable platform, I'm sorry, a platform for disposable content. And the reason it does that, so you can come back, you can log in and you can check it 20 times a day and see the top 10 things in your feed and they can track you and they can sell you stuff, um, which is really cool. Like if that's what you're into. Um, but lately, 2020, you know, with, with what is perhaps the biggest threat to our ability to support ourselves, our careers and our families, you know, we haven't had a, we don't have a community or a platform that helps us in in meaningful way. Does does that make sense? Oh, completely, completely. You know, and thank you for articulating it that way. I was, I was always hung up on like uh, that it was impossible to find anything, and that's why mm. I, I I you know started the Logic TV website. It was just right. It, it was almost guaranteed that once a day, you know, there'd be some question that you'd seen before, right. you know. Uh, on how to do something or where is something. And then, you know, I, I fell victim to it myself over and mm -hmm. over again of, you know, like sure. I'd be in the middle of a job and I couldn't figure something out. And I was like, oh, I knew this was somewhere. Right. And you type the exact search terms into Facebook and you'd get, you know, some mm -hmm. random, you know, list of posts from the last eight years or something like that. Right. So, right. And that with the, the inability to bookmark things that you, you yourself have posted or you yourself have find interesting, the only way to find what you need is just to ask it again, which causes a lot of noise and creates this system where the only people that are posting are the people that have that, you know, first off have, you know, the insane amount of confidence it takes to put yourself in front of everyone's, you know, on the top of everyone's feet on their phone. Um, and then there's no, there's nothing that is, new and pure and helpful to those unless you've been doing it so long and you know everyone that you don't care what you look like <laughs> or how, how you're, you know, you don't care that it's the most basic thing ever because like, you know, it's scary. 
Yeah. Um, so anyway, so that's just the, the bigger picture side of there of, of kind of why. Um, and, um, and yeah, and who knows, like, you know, for the, for the point, for, for the time being, there's been a lot of people that are going there, a lot of people that are posting on, on both Facebook and our site. And I know that's a little awkward, um, but we don't quite know what the answer is yet. We're just trying to put something out there that we believe in mm-hmm. and see what happens and talk to people and get their feedback and change it because it's ours. It's our platform. We can do with it whatever the heck we want. Mm-hmm. Um, and the best way for, for, um, for you at home, you know, if it's benefit, if it's a value to you and you're benefiting from it, just show up and, you know, post something, like something, click on some links. Um, and even that alone is stuff that we can take back to the people that support logic like Cynesis and like Boris. And then eventually we can give you cool stuff. And mm-hmm. it's not just like, you know, we're the service, whereas on Facebook, you know, you are the product or you are, you yeah. are, you know, if, if it's free, then, you know, then, then, then you are being sold. And so right. it's that's not free. cool. It's not without value, even though it's free. Yeah, that's right. Totally. Um, anyway, so I know that's, that's just a brief kind of synopsis of, of why we're so passionate about this. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we can, you know, if anyone else wants to dive more into that, we can, uh, but I figured we'd just jump into some features. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Okay. Um, what Quinn say? If you're not the consumer, you are the consumed. consumed. Well said. Amen, brother. Amen. So, um, one big thing that's easily missed is the, the mobile app. So I wanted to kind of show that with you, uh, show that for you now. And this worked earlier, and of course it's not going to work now. But we're going to do it live anyway. Did you? (laughs) So good. (laughs) So good. It's like a Michael Jackson popcorn meme for everyone at home just watching us uh, (laughs) folly. Okay. Um, So um, the mobile app. Well, it's unfortunately we're, we're it's not called the Logic mobile app because we're only two weeks in. Maybe someday. Um, but if you can go to the Apple store or the iOS or the Android store, sorry, the Google play store. Um, if you search for an app called the discourse hub, then it's this little guy here right at the top of my screen. Um, you can download this. And because we're using, uh, a, an official discourse hosted platform, uh, we get to use this and it's great because we get notifications, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it just wants to, be able to send you um, notifications and gives you access to your photos and whatnot and your camera. Um, Once you do that, you can add your first site. And all you do is you type in our site, just like so, and connect and continue and authorize. And boom, now you have access to our site on your phone. Um, so that's kind of it. It's really simple. Um, but once you have that now you can, you can control the notifications and the amount of, um, distractions, so to speak that come your way. And I can show you that now on the, uh, on the website. Uh, first off, are there any questions on this stuff? It's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Cool. Okay. Let's try the website now. Okay. So um, the first thing that I wanted to highlight is the trust system. I made a little post about um, all of uh, basically the trust system or it's, it's designed <laughs> at first, uh, it's just an anti-spam tool at first so that people uh, don't start an account and start bombing us with inappropriate content pinks uh, and li- links and pictures. Um, and so, when you first join the site, you become trust level zero, which is new. Um, and we have since changed this. Thank you, Jamie Beckwith, for complaining about being called basic. Um, you're so right. <laughs> so um, whilst this post does say trust what level new. called Fortran. Huh? That's right. Yeah. Um, so new basic and member have been um, replaced with 8-bit, 10-bit, and 12-bit. Nice. Respectively. Uh, regular is 16-bit float or half float, and uh, leaders are 32-bit float. Just so you're just, Perfect. Um, you know, something that was a little bit more celebratory than being basic. Um, so when you are new 
or when you're an eight bit member. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> I've never said that out loud before. When you're um, just dithering around the site, is that what you're saying? That's exactly right. So you only got you, you only got eight choices of on or off. Um, sorry, 256. Um, so there's just a few things that you can't do. Now, one thing that someone, um, I think it was Andy Davis posted recently, I, I sent him an invite and he accepted. He said, like, great, I'm gonna share my links. And he couldn't send any links uh, because he needs to spend a few minutes on the site. But you know, if you do that, and you know, we know you because it's a small community, um, first off, just give it a couple hours because I usually keep track of everyone and there's when users sign up, like if I know you and I've seen you and heard of you, like I promote you because like why the heck shouldn't we? We're, all, we're your, your job is not to be an 8-bit. Everyone knows we should be working at 10-bit these days. So um, so that's kind of, you know, just bear with us while while we do that. Um, but if you drop me a message to say, hey, I want to post some stuff, just let me know and I'll, I'll get you up to trust level one um, 10 bit just so you can, uh, you can participate how you choose. Um, so it's just designed to reward and, and, and keep people from, you know, coming back and contributing. Um, and as you get promoted, there are some additional groups and categories that, um, are available to you. Uh, so for example, in the categories page, um, there's a few that are, are kind of reserved for, um, people that have just been here more than a minute or two only so that we can at least protect, um, you know, so people can, you know, if they want to sign up and see stuff, no problem. But if they're spending 10 minutes on the site, um, they will get promoted and they'll have access to a couple more categories of a water cooler or, uh, you know, something like that. And there's also some private uh, categories that we're reserving for, um, uh, for uh, groups of, of friends to come together and have, you know, dialogue that's meaningful for them. It's, that doesn't need to happen in public. Um, any questions so far on the trust level stuff? Oh, it seems good. And uh, yep. I, again, just want to reinforce that, you know, like as Randy said, we need to figure out a way to, to keep the, the spam out. And it's a, it's, it's a fluid document. So as, as things, you know, as we get the feedback, we, uh, we can certainly make changes to those things. But so far, it seems to be uh, working as, at least as intended. Totally. And I think the one of the, 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 the first my first concern as an administrator for the site is to make sure that stuff on the site is helpful. Um, and, you know, sometimes you're not into memes or distractions. Well, guess what? We're going to walk through that right now so you can shape your experience, um, you know, how you see fit. Um, so categories. Now, categories are, are both kind of loved and hated um, because right now our current Facebook site doesn't have categories. Um, but I think they're really helpful. Um, when you first launch, uh, log the site, you can, you know, you'll just see all the latest and these are here. These categories are here. They pop up when you post something and, and moderators and staff from the site can update these so that if you, you know, if you forget to, um, we'll go ahead and make that adjustment for you so that people at home um, can still have access to things that matter to them. So for the categories, um, let's say, uh, you wanted to, you know, you're, you know, you just wanted to see tips and tricks and you didn't care about logic live, sadly. Um, although now that there's a ventriloquist possibly happening, maybe yeah, you'll care more about it. Um, or maybe you don't care about, uh, between renders or water cooler stuff. Like you just need the veg, not the, uh, not the garnish. So under your, uh, profile go into your settings and under your preferences, for your notifications and categories. So you can, and let me turn all these off because this is not how these look. This is my stuff. So this is the default. Um, and there's a, a slight difference between the watched, the tracked, and the first post. And the watched is, um, is basically like notifications. So if you come through here and say, um, I want uh, flame questions, then only category and only new topics posted to categories will share with you notifications on your mobile device. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, if you say, turn this off and say tracked and you say flame questions, well then when you go to your latest page, those will be tracked numerically here. So it's still tracking it, but it's not interrupting your world. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yep. Um, and so that's a subtle difference that kind of got me. And that's why, I'm, you know, I think it's worth sharing that with you now. 
Um, and so, so I just yeah, watch we'll everything. Watch, they'll get you notifications and tracked. Uh, won't get you notifications, but you'll see them uh, when you first log into the site. That's correct. And, and, like, and there's also, um, if they're tracked, then there'll be a small number. Um, can you see my cursor waving around? Yeah. Yes. Um, and thank you, Quinn. That's exactly right. Tracked will highlight it for you when you visit. Um, and it'll show you a numerical number up here with how many of those are, oh, okay. are new for you, if that makes sense. And then the watching first post is great too if you just want to get bombed with like the first post, but you don't want to see all the million replies of people saying, hey, thank you. No, what's this? You know, that's so if you want, you can just add things to be your first post. So for example, first post, I just want to see the first posts for VFX tools. Um, and I don't care about all the replies. Then this is how you could set that up. And then look, if you don't care about anything, let me just free up some more categories here. So if you don't want anything that is a possible distraction, then you can turn off or be muted for some of these categories that you might feel are distractions for you in your world, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so have a look and play with this as you see fit. Any questions, give me a shout. Um, there's also things too, like if there's some users that you just don't appreciate or you're not into, or you're like, hey, they don't add joy to my life, then you can mute them here. Um, also tags are the same way. You can tag, um, uh, themes or keywords and these are really helpful like maybe you are um, you know like if you're an Autodesk friend and we do have um, we do have several members of Autodesk group joining us um, you can tag for you know these tags here so for example I'm that's kind of my next evolution of trying to figure out how to manage this and if we have tags like support tag um, like I need help even though this isn't an authorized legitimate Autodesk site, if you're looking for help that you think an Autodesk friend might be able to help you with, you could add a tag and then they could search for it, they could watch it. So lots of f power and flexibility, but it does take some figuring out of kind of personally for you to figure out what do you want so you can set this up as you see fit. That's great. That's really great. And then if you, let's say, uh, probably the third most asked question is, um, you know, hey, why are you doing this? We just want old school flame news, right? So that was back in the day. It was started by, fun fact, did you, Andy, did you know where the original flame news started? No. So the original flame news started in Chicago with Jeff Huser and MB. Really? At the original Cutters in Chicago. So Cutter Studios way back in the day, like I think it was, a, it must've been the late eighties, early nineties. Um, they had, I think it was, uh, I was talking with MB about this a couple of weeks ago. I think they had flame serial number three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't know, you know, they were still trying to figure out how to fly the aircraft as it was being built, so to speak. Um, and so they started an email group and that turned into flame news. That's awesome. And that I was catching, yeah. I was catching up with MB a couple of weeks ago about that and I had no idea. Um, and so many people have, you know, enjoyed how this new site kind of is reminiscent of that old email thread. And here's precisely how you can actually set that up a little bit more, you know, just like that. So if you are click on your, on your, on your profile icon, go to settings, preferences, and in your emails, then the very bottom here is what's called ena uh, enable mailing list mode. And if you click on this and you save this, then there will be, then you'll just get an email blast for every activity from the site. And so there's three op there's a couple options. There's send me an email for every new post and email for every new post, except for my own, because if I did it, I don't need to see it in my email again. And so you can do this and boom, now none of this stuff is, you know, none of the categories or the watch or the notifications are there. You're just going to get emails for it. So you can deal with this in your own Gmail or, you know, in your own uh, platform of choice, if that makes sense to filter and to respond and you can start new topics and you can reply and you can do things mm -hmm. from there. So that's a, a really powerful way to fit into how some of you currently have your um, incoming mail and social media sorted uh, in your email. Does that make sense? Oh, totally. This is great. I know. I mean, even just me personally, sometimes the, it's the, it's, you know, the, um, 
overload of notifications and the overload of, of stuff that I don't really care about is, is, is the biggest turnoff to any mm -hmm. kind of forum or social media platform or anything like that. And being mm -hmm. able to get this granular is just super helpful. I mean, for sure. And I think that's one of the reasons that, that a lot of people turn off Facebook is because it's hard to, it's hard to see only the things you care about and you turn them off or you don't go there, you visit a couple of times and many people have contacted me and they say they just check it before they go to bed. Well now they don't have to check it, they can have emails ready for them or they can you know, just filter certain topics or categories so that mm -hmm. if, if they just aren't interested, if they just don't care if someone posts something that isn't important to them as a flame user, they can bypass it. Yeah. Okay, um, moving forward, um, badges are an interesting, evolution. Um, so, um, oh, I forgot to fix that. That's my fault. Um, so the badges are kind of a nod to the Autodesk area. One thing that was really special about the area is you could see how many artists um, were, were posting and providing solutions. And that was, I was always really cool for me, like to see, and you go over there and you see um, Andy Dill has, you know, like this is like the top fourth most contributor to the site. Um, and the people above him are Autodesk employees and he's in front of other Autodesk employees. It just shows you that someone there can be trusted and mm -hmm. can, you know, knows what you go through as an artist potentially and can help you. And so the badge system, and this is all the default stuff straight out of the, out of the box from, from our discourse friends. So um, as we evolve, you know, I'd like to change some of these because like, you know, some of these are the, the icons are a little underwhelming for people that work on fancy pictures like we do. Um, but <laughs> Don't you know, get rid when, of the first emoji badge though, man. That's right. No, I'm not going to get rid of the badge. We could change some artwork and add some things like, you know, there's some other fun things coming up. Um, and so these are just happens to be the ones that uh, I've picked up just because I have to for being, you know, one of the guys, it's, it's my job to look after the site. Um, mm -hmm. And they can easily be found with, um, oh, um, like Andy Dill's actually got a, a bunch of funny, uh, if you see his, uh oh, there we go. So the badges can be presented um, on the user's profile page and you can see what they're doing. And for example, um, congratulations, Andy Dill, for being our very first new user of the month. <laughs> that was so perfect. Thank you. I, I was hoping you'd go with something like this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh man, my life has been changed. I'm sorry. Rand Randy, thank you for showing me that I could use my stream deck as a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Carrie during the uh, summer, summer party who had the soundboard just queued up and it was so oh, brilliant. I was just, it's all Carrie's fault. So if you don't. <laughs> If it's too childish for you, blame Carrie. There you um, go. And so, yeah, I think the badge system is powerful and it helps you just see of what's, what's going on out there and the people that are, are helping you um, in your world. Mm -hmm. um, any questions? I know I'm moving quickly, but there's just a couple more things to cover. So far, so good out there? Yeah, so far, so good. This has been great, man. Thank you for, uh, for taking the time. Uh, to, I mean, I've learned things from watching this. Cool. Uh, two more things. Um, uh, that I want to talk about. So um, themes, um, they're not very well labeled here, but these are th different themes that you can, you can launch. Um, I've tried to keep the first five or six um, pretty static so that if you like one, it stays. Um, you can change the themes into, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little rich using this one, but you know, we'll go with it. Um, but these are, these are designed to help you. Um, you added in, Star in Wars. Oh, I did add Star Wars. Um, this one's pretty ridiculous. Oh my God. And the very first time, oh, if you it. launch Star Wars, it launches the terms and conditions as the opening title That's card. <laughs> so you can sit by and 
um, you can sit by. But if you get lost, uh, and this has happened to a couple of users before because um, I've been terrible and I've, my, my, my sysadmin is, is, is only improving, shall we say. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to preferences, your little settings tab, and then here preferences and then interface, this is where you can change your theme if you get lost. So for example, if you're in, um, every once in a while add a new theme and I have to add another theme to link the themes and then you don't get a chance to change the theme and then you don't like the theme and then you hate me and you never visit the site again, have no fear, <laughs> you can change it here. Um, that's my, that's my, my flame guilt uh, coming up. Um, but you can also change the size of the text and you can, you can adjust oh, cool. things here just to make your, your lives easier because some of the themes are um, you know, unfortunately small and tougher on our, uh, on some of our eyes that are, are used to just sitting in the dark. Mm -hmm. Jeff says that, uh, there's a warp, you know, a light speed or whatever that happens every now and then. Oh, there is, there is. And, um, you know, I don't know. Okay. This, oh, he says you have to scroll. Oh, you have to scroll. Okay. We might crash and burn and this may not work. That's okay. Uh, after, after my, <laughs> After my section of this, oh, there's yeah. nothing to do. No, we're just going to see if we can break it here. Okay, never mind. I was going to try. If, it's really great when you log in for the first time because you can uh, you can see there, there are lightsabers too somewhere. Um, oh, nice. So anyway. Um, and I'm working on this little feature here, which is hard because I'm not a CSS person. I don't know it, so I'm just faking my way through it. But one day I'll have the ability to turn on um, a light and a dark mode for each theme. Like this one is, I think is really beautiful. It's just a switch that's right there. So mm -hmm. I know it's a small thing, but when you're sitting in a dark room in front of a, a, a dark gray user interface, nothing screams I'm not working like this. <laughs> like that. Right here. <laughs> Right. Or um, as, as Randy and I uh, found out while we were doing our run through, if you have two displays going on uh, and you, you put this like nice, bright, you know, full white browser window on the other display, it acts yeah. as a really fill light. Oh, oh yeah. And did you see, um, you can do your uh, real, real time normals remapping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Autodesk be jealous with my real-time uh, web-based normals remapping. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. I feel like this is That's the only awesome. time I could use that joke. Um, okay, just a couple more things that I wanted to share. Um, the searching is super good. And um, uh, if you are looking, let me go back to my other theme because I'm so used to seeing it this way. Um, if you're looking for things, so... For example, um, Andy posted something, um, and all I could remember is that Donald's Rum he mentioned Donald Rumsfeld in the post for some reason. Um, Different and Andy. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Andy Dill. No, not Donald. And so, well, here it is here. So I just typed in the, the beginning of Rumsfeld, and this is, this is the post that he had made. Um, and so the search is pretty powerful and it's fast. Um, you can also change options here. So you can search for, um, uh, let's just ask for, um, let's say you're looking for the Andy Davis uh, scale post, um, mm -hmm. but there's a bunch of stuff and you can say, okay, but I want it to be posted by Andy Davis, which is here. and there's his understanding scale and apps. Um, you can also search for only the things that you posted or you know things and filter by category. So the search is incredibly so powerful. Oh, um, so great. And if you knew it was just posted, you know, I don't know, before or after a certain times, you can do that here as well. Mm -hmm. um, any questions on searching? I know it's an easy thing to talk about, but anything? Oh, it's wonderful. Are? Okay. Um, Oh, the last thing that I want to talk about were bookmarks. So uh, for example, well, here, I'll show you my bookmarks. So um, under your profile icon here, there's this little bookmark tab. And these are posts and replies within posts that I have bookmarked. So for example, um, I bookmarked this one from Peter and Peter had posted 
this really helpful little piece from Autodesk where it was like the things that typically do best oh, in yes, certain yes, colors, yes. right? And so if you are, if you're seeing something like, okay, cool. Um, let's find something that I was interesting in. Uh, oh my God. This is so much more helpful than like the adding a plus one or a following to like a, a oh, Facebook yeah. post. You yeah. Know? So let's say, um, uh, there was something, oh, cool. So, so Graham posted something here that I was like, okay, cool. I need to know about that. So under this little tool, triple thing, you can click on the tools and you can, uh-oh, where'd it go? Oh, uh, oh, here it is, bookmark. So now I have bookmarked just oh. this individual reply. And then I can, I can set a timer. I can say, you know what? Remind me later on today. Oh, that's great. Okay, so I can come up to my bookmarks, sorry, here. And this post has been bookmarked and it will ping me and give me a notification at five o'clock today that there was something I wanted to do with it, like um, write it down or implement it or whatever. Um, and if you are scrolling through and, uh, let's see, let's find another topic that was cool. Um, oh yeah. So Jeff or um, Eric had this great tip the yes. other day. This was brilliant. Um, and if I bookmark this and I don't need a reminder because I just wanted to remember it or something technical that I wanted to remember from a long time ago. Now it's sitting right here and it's just, it's just there. And so maybe it's a, um, a support, um, uh, support link. Mm -hmm. So like if you're just tired of searching for something, then you can bookmark it. So tools, bookmark, and then now you'll never lose your support link or a procedure for restarting a uh, back burner or mm -hmm. doing the back burner XML hack so that your back burner can cache and export. Mm -hmm. Anyway, those are, it's a really powerful system that's um, just kind of gaining traction. Um, I love the reminder. I can't tell you how many times that something's come up. I find something because I know like, Hey, it's the weekend I'm looking through or it's 11 o'clock mm -hmm. at night that I'm going to be having uh, a meeting or a session or whatever later in the mm -hmm. week. I need to remember that's just yeah. fantastic because, yeah. um, Oh wow. I didn't even know about that. Ooh. Um, and then there's, um, well, there was one other thing I was going to talk about. Anybody have any other questions? The, feed, the uh, feedback in, in the chat about the bookmark stuff has been really positive. So that's great. Yeah. Now, one thing that is, um, it's on my radar, it's on my to-do list. Um, and this is probably from just spending a little bit too much time on Reddit um, as an educational and inspirational tool, Andy, not as a time-wasting tool. Um, if you've ever seen Reddit bots, that is one of the coolest things about forums. Have you ever seen a Reddit bot do its thing, Andy? Uh, no. Okay. So there's something that's been happening a lot lately where people are posting, you know, questions that the group has an answer to, but a computer could easily solve. Mm -hmm. And um, like, for example, on Facebook, how many times have we seen, uh, can anyone remember the support phone number? Or how the hell do you, do you upvote something in flame feedback? And so this is a huge stretch goal of mine right now, and it, does, it is expensive to implement. But if we have enough people on the site one day, I would love to institute chat bots. And these are, these are bots. These are lines of computer code that typically go over the site every few seconds. And if there's something that they can contribute to, they, can, they contribute, oh, they share, they reply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I post something that says, why, um, hey, um, who, how, my back burner isn't working. Like, how can I, how do I reset it? You know, mm -hmm. why couldn't a bot reply with the friggin' procedure to, to relaunch using back burner XML doing the hack where you rename it, remove it, and it regenerates and all, et cetera. So that's really like the next level thing of where this community can go because the mm -hmm. users are helpful, but a lot of times, you know, you just need to know what the answer is and you don't need someone to log in to give it to you when it, it's already out there and linkable in real time. So that's really are, great, Randy. I'd never, honestly, I'd never heard a positive use for a, the term bot. You know, it's always, it's always expressed in like, you know, something that's stealing an election or something like that. So 
This is uh, well, damn it, Andy. We're going to use it for good and fix Backburner. Um, no, right. Um, but like other things, like conversion bots, like mm -hmm. um, millimeters to feet, inches, or um, field of view to whatever. Or there's 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 all kind of mathematical bots of you know, mm -hmm. you can. Anyway, so there's a lot of things that are powerful and possible. Um, and it doesn't make much sense to implement it for 400 users, but if we have a couple thousand users, well then, you know, then we've got, we have real ammunition of like legitimate investment to help the community. That's great. Uh, Jeff had a question here about um, maybe getting some bookmark folders as a feature, mm -hmm. if that's possible, <laughs> just to keep them organized. <laughs> I don't know. We should, we should ask Autodesk. Um, that's a good question. I haven't gotten that far yet because obviously I have six or seven. Um, let me look into that. Cool. Let me look into that. There's, um, there's a, an incredibly vibrant and, and positive theme, theme, sorry, um, community of discourse administrators. And in case you're wondering, this is a discourse server. Um, discourse is the, is the software, the underlying hosting and company that, that creates, administers and hosts this server. Um, so in the meantime, if you get lost or if I take more than 15, 20 minutes to respond, you know, a lot of times you can ask and you can search for things like discourse solutions, like bookmark folders on discourse would be a Google thing. Um, and cause that's what I'm going to do after this call. Um, <laughs> but you know, there are themes and components and add-ons and plugins, and those are all things that, that we can look at. Um, there are even like, eventually there are even, um, Slack integrations and Andy, you and I were testing that the other day if you don't want to visit another place and you just want everything to just get pounded to your discord, um, sorry, your Slack site, you know, we could look into that. Um, there's also Jitsi meet integrations for video chats and, and video conferencing. So again, mm -hmm. those are all things that are out there and possible. Um, but you know, we need, we need a, a vibrant active community that's participating yeah. and asking for those things. So, so definitely, you know, let us know what you want to see. Give us the feedback. The feedback is, is the easiest way to get new things implemented, whether it's like yeah. things that aren't working, working or new features. And mm -hmm. uh, please encourage, uh, you know, any, anybody you know to come over to forum.logic.tv and sign up because the more participation we have, the more, uh, the more it's going to grow. So thanks, Randy. Yeah. Really appreciate it, man. You've done like an amazing job getting this thing, getting this dream, you know, going and turning it from dream into reality. So thanks so much for all your hard work. Sure thing. Sweet. Anybody have any further questions? Thank you, Jeff. All right. Well, let's close this out. Thank you, Randy. Let's close this out. And uh, as we, you know, as we like to say here, it's now prize time at logic.tv. We're going to give away one of these uh, attractive and useful logic themed and logic labeled and logic branded phone chargers, courtesy of our friends at, uh, at Cinesis. I mean, all right, let's do it. That's right. You could be if one of the lucky oh, winner. You could be. Hold uh, on, I'm I'm coming back to make some funny sounds. <laughs> you could be. I'm gonna stop this music. You could be just like our friends Carrie and Miriam, and uh, and be the coolest kids on your block uh, with the uh, Logic phone charger, courtesy of our friends at Cinesis. So uh, I am going to share now the uh, random name picker that I've been using. This is brought to you uh, and actually brought to everyone on the internet by what looks like. 24 seven homework help to the rescue and some place where you can buy a mini Cooper. Everybody needs a job. Okay. So here we go. I can't see your screen, Andy, if that's what you're wondering. Oh, you can't see the share. No, mm -mm. this has been a banner. Day. <laughs> uh, random name picker. There we go. Here it comes. I'm the winner. That's Quinn Richardson, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. That's it. Quinn, congratulations, my friend. You are going to be uh, fortunate enough to walk around LA with the coolest phone charger known to man. So Quinn Richardson, ladies and gentlemen, our big winner for this week.
And of course, thank you to everybody at Cinesis for sponsoring. Uh, let me show you what we got lined up for. Oh, Andy, don't uh, forget next week. Next week, we're going to do the uh, the two sent the two sentence tip. Oh, that's right, Raffle. Randy. Thank you for reminding me. We're going to have uh, there's a section, a category rather, on uh, on the forum. Uh, Randy, do you want to show that real quick? Yes. It's called um, the two sentence tips, right? Yes. Oh, let me just search for it. Let me, let me just search, search for it. Hey. So yes, two sentence tips. So for those of you, um, and, and bonus points for, well, actually no bonus points if you do it in the form of a haiku. Um, but if you, (laughs) if you, and we'll, we'll link to this, but if you provide a, any two sentence tip, like Maury just says master tracking that makes everything else easier. Hey, that's a tip. (laughs) Guess what? Maury is entered into next week's wash your hands before dinner. That's right. Um, so yeah, again, you don't have to follow the two sentence thing, but you have to keep it, you know, just keep it short and it could be, uh, exactly. It should be washing hands for 20 seconds, uh, with soap. That's two sentences. And yeah, you'll be entered into next week's, uh, that's, uh, Sunday, September 20th, if I'm not mistaken, Andy. Yes, it is. Cool. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. And that'll be when, uh, when you get automatically entered for that drawing. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so coming up next week, in addition to giving that away, we're going to have uh, Christoph Sopletas coming back um, to show off some of his beauty techniques. That'll be next uh, Sunday at 2 p.m. Um, if you haven't had a chance to check out his amazing FX PhD stuff, please do. He's a fantastic guy. He actually was uh, presenting uh, on Boris's uh, uh, what was it, virtual IBC last week, uh, and just showing some great tips for, uh, for beauty cleanup. So tune in for that. We're going to be off on September 27th, but we're coming back in October uh, for One Frame of White. So October 4th at 4 p.m. is going to be a One Frame of White reunion show, and I am super excited for this. Uh, I've got a bunch of past One Frame of White winners who are going to uh, show up. We're just going to catch up with them, see how they've been doing. We've got Greg Paul Malone, Darren Hoffmeyer, Gabriel Garrido, and Caleb Cahill lined up so far, and, uh, and hopefully I'll have some more to announce. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then following that on uh, October 11th, whoops, at 6 p.m. is going to be the big One Frame of White show. Um, let's, <laughs> this will be the second edit that I do <laughs> before posting this. Third, we can't okay. see your screen, Andy. You seriously can't see the screen? No, we're looking at your face right now, aren't we? Oh, Quinn can see it and Jeff can see it. And they, oh, and, really? and Quinn just won one of these chargers. Cool. Um, so yeah, so October 11th at 6 p.m. Uh, is going to be One Frame of White 2020. Uh, I do have uh, someone who's going to be a live announcer for that. I'm very excited. I've always wanted to do a live award show. Um, and I think uh, it's going to come as close as I possibly can <laughs> to, uh, to having that dream realized. Um, and then uh, October 18th, uh, we're going we're gonna to do an uh, interview with Amanda Elliott. She's a, a, an assistant based out of LA, and she's uh, going to kind of tell her story and, and really talk about the role of a flame assistant. You know, uh, it's, it's really a misnomer to think of a flame assistant as like a junior flame artist. Um, she is by no means a junior flame artist. And uh, to, to hear her experiences and her journey, uh, is, is, it's just going to be a great interview. I'm really looking forward to that. And then October 25th at 2 p.m., that's when our friends from Boris are going to come in. We're going to have Mary Poplin from Boris come and do a mocha deep dive. So One Frame of White is open now. Please go ahead and, uh, and sign up. Definitely head on over to the forum and get as many of your friends as you can to sign up and just participate, participate, participate. That's the key to, uh, to getting the forum going, keeping it successful. This episode and uh, will be available up on Logic.tv with all the other Logic Lives for you to peruse. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, it's going to be a couple weeks before the next Logic podcast episode, but I do have one in the works. So just stay tuned for that. But if you haven't subscribed, definitely check them out. Uh, it's a great, you know, kind of uh, uh, another angle on some of the Logic content and, and a great way to get to know some of the personalities. Uh, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. And thank you as always to Cynesis. That's it, everybody. Thanks so much, Randy, for, uh, for being the guest this week and for, you know, Uh, all the hard work you've done for the forum. So we will see you next week, everybody. Thanks so much.